Welcome here. So what I want to do is write the polynomial function given the zeros negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And if you remember when we're talking about the zeros, the zeros are the same thing as our x-intercepts. And what we do to find our zeros, when we do like a regular factoring problem, mm -hmm. right? We have a polynomial, then we factor it, then we use the zero product property to write our zeros. Mm -hmm. So I'll just again use a different example. Uh, let's do x squared plus, uh, let's do 5x plus 4. All right, when we fact, and let's say I want to find the zeros. So to do this, I factor it. So I say 0 equals x plus 4 times x plus 1. Then you use the zero product property. So you could say 0 equals x plus 4 and 0 equals x plus 1. Now we solve for our zeros, and you could say x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 1. So those are your zeros. So what I'm going to do is I just have my zeros laid out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1, x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 2. Now I'm going to kind of extra steps for you. Um, and that's just so you can understand and see the process that I'm going to work through. So what I'm going to do is we're starting from here. So you could say like the zeros, negative 4 comma negative 1. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start just keep on working backwards. So the next thing is set these all equal to 0. So you could set x plus 2 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, x doesn't matter, plus or minus. You can say x minus 1 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. So now we set them all equal to 0. And then once we set them all equal to 0, remember we use the zero product property to get though. So we can now all write these as factors. So you could say x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x, because x minus 0 is just going to be x. Now there's something that I did that I want to make sure you're all aware of. I rearranged it. I didn't write x plus 1 times x x plus 2 times x plus 1. What I did is I wrote x plus 1 times x, or sorry, x plus 2 times x minus 2. And the reason I did that, because I've done so many math problems in my life, I've looked at it and I've grown to try to see if there's any shortcuts you can use. And there are some shortcuts, because if I know that when I multiply x plus 2 times x minus 2, that's a difference of two squares. So when I go and multiply these binomials, all I need to do is multiply my first two terms and my last two terms. And the reason being is a difference of two squares, your middle terms are going to cancel out. And that's the same thing that happens with x plus 1, x minus 1. Multiply it out, foil it, however you want to do it. You'll notice that the middle terms cancel out, leaving you only with x squared minus 1 times x. Now I have this function. And what this is going to all represent is f of x. We'll call my function f of x. So now I'm going to have to use a FOIL, or just to multiply the binomials, to multiply these two binomials. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. Negative 4 times x squared is a negative 4x squared. And negative 4 times Good 1 morning, is? Just a reminder, Friday night is our first regular season home football game. You will Seriously. be able to buy pre-sale tickets during lunch. For $7, and Mustang Spirit will be, will be on sale during lunch tomorrow. Again, Friday night is our first home football game versus Creekside. The Mustangs won their game last week, 22-20, over Atlantic Coast. Come out and support the Mustangs. Pre-sale tickets will be available during lunch tomorrow in front of the cafeteria for $7. Have a great day, Mustangs. Perfect. Sound about annoying, right? So all I did was I multiplied these two to get this. Um, then I did again use the x as a distributive property to distribute to each one of my terms. And my final polynomial with the zeros of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 provides me with x to the fifth minus x cubed minus 4x. That's x. Where did I go wrong? What I have? No, that's x squared. What am I doing? I got to combine those, right? That's x to the fifth, that is going to be, I guess I wrote those wrong. I can combine these two terms to give me negative 5x squared plus 4. So when I multiply that by x, OK, there we go. So you combine these two terms, right, because they're both x squareds. So therefore, when you multiply through, your final answer is x to the fifth minus 5x cubed plus 4x. 
So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry that uh, that got me a little off track. So I got it now. We're all good. <laughs>